Hi everyone, good, good morning or, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, today we are going to be talking about how to tackle SharePoint chaos, uh, managing the unmanageable. I, uh, my name is Liam Jones. Uh, I'm one of the account executives here at Mail Manager. And uh, today I'm very happy to, to be joined by, by Dominic Kent, who is a, a bit of a Microsoft expert. Uh, Dominic is a consultant specializing in unified communications and workplace productivity. He works with clients on go-to-market plans and creates solutions designed with users in mind. So yeah, thank you for, for, for joining us, Dominic. Now, um, before we, we jump in, um, I'll just quickly run through the agenda for today's session. Uh, so what we're going to cover is we're looking at what SharePoint chaos is and, and how to avoid it, uh, as well as what happens when you don't manage SharePoint from day one. Uh, why email is the missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to Microsoft governance how to address this information gap and then finally we'll do a, a live q a and throughout the webinar we do have a q a feature so please do pop your questions in there as we're going along and, and dominic and i will get to them at, at the end and over to you dom brilliant thanks liam thanks for the introduction thank you everyone for joining us um sharepoint is a topic that i'm quite passionate about i've been a a user an administrator someone implementing it someone managing the the technical support tickets that come in so i've kind of got a whole holistic view um and at the moment like liam said i i work a lot on positioning the products based on everything that i've learned that's gone right and gone wrong um so we find ourselves in this position of sharepoint chaos so we thought we'd start by defining exactly what sharepoint chaos is um sharepoint chaos is what happens when you either don't have any guiding principles so that your users know exactly what to do at each moment in time and at each part of SharePoint. There's obviously a lot of moving parts. And if you don't know exactly what your users are going to do, you don't know how to govern it. So the second second element of SharePoint chaos is, is the actual governance of SharePoint. So without those guiding principles, you can't have that governance and management of exactly what's going on in your implementation. It's also when you have lots of users doing their own thing, right? Everybody has their own way of using any of the tools in the Microsoft stack or outside the Microsoft stack. Everybody's developed their own personal habits and they have their own personal preference, which will become the, the go-to for them. Outside of your internal users, you've got external contractors who need access to or think they need access to anything that exists on your internal SharePoint site. So you might have technical support tickets coming in to say that they need access to something that you wouldn't naturally uh, give to somebody that wasn't part of your business. So we've got mismatch access between the people collaborating internally and externally. Ultimately, SharePoint chaos is when you have documents all over the place, um, leading to more tickets than you've, you, you'd ever desire. And ultimately, the security risks that come with each of those. So when you don't manage SharePoint from day one, uh, a bunch of things happen, right? So if there aren't any guiding principles and if you don't enforce those, you suffer from a, a variety of things that, that are all rather negative when you put them in a list like this. So limited permissions, both internally and externally, inconsistent naming conventions. So the the usability of SharePoint becomes it becomes hard to hard to manage and it becomes difficult to navigate which obviously leads to uh, different management styles as well. So some people that are site owners might think that something should be enforced, whereas people that actually need access to these different things might think that a different management style would be better. And ultimately, you've got uh, people pushing and pulling in different directions for management of files and information. What that then leads to is often is duplication, as people might download a document or check it out but not check it back in. So you might have different files on somebody's local drive and they won't upload it to SharePoint. So you've got duplicate files in play within your business, often without even knowing this, right? Because you don't have access to see what's been downloaded, saved and not re-uploaded. And all of these four come into the same list really. And it makes it a difficult navigation experience because you don't know where different users have, have put different things. The end result of all of these, these five rather negative things is that it becomes a free for all. The collaboration experience becomes disjointed 
and ultimately your organization is, is rather unproductive. This I thought might be rather relatable to, to many of us on this website, uh, on this webinar. This is from Reddit um, and the user computer is burning on the r slash SharePoint Reddit started to have a moan, uh, turned it into a question. Uh, the the part that I'll read out is, is, is quite pertinent to what we're talking about today. So in the second paragraph, our absolute our, our own SharePoint is an absolute joke to my mind. Everybody just uses it as a dumping ground for any old thing that someone somewhere may need in future. I'm sure we can all relate to that. There appears to be no logic to the folder tree and the most random stuff with key documents. Key documents also are also 20 layers deep in some folders that bear no relation to the content. I think when I wrote the previous slides, I tried to define what SharePoint chaos is. This this user has has completely uh, completely nailed it and uh, has asked the question, do you fellow sysadmins have the same issue and how do you attempt to manage it? When I took the screenshot, you see it has 10 upvotes, um, but I think we'll probably all agree on this slide that we're all in the same boat. So we're just going to fire up a little poll just to see if we're all on the same page. So if you want to choose from one or any of the above of the the symptoms to see if we're uh, we're suffering from SharePoint chaos, we'll let you click through those for a couple of seconds. The limited permissions one is one that I get stuck on quite a lot as an external contractor for most of my my customers. They might share something with me or think they've shared something with me and uh, I still can't quite get the access I wanted. Just give everyone a couple more seconds to hit any of those options. And rather unsurprisingly, to me at least, um, is that pretty much everyone has voted for everything. I think the the least we've got here is forty seven percent with limited permissions. That that one surprises me, maybe because I am the external contractor in a, a lot of instances. Um, inconsistent naming conventions is quite popular or very popular. Difficult to navigate duplicated files, different management styles. Yeah, across the board, I think we're all in agreement that. SharePoint is a wonderful tool, but we've got to manage it correctly, right? So now that we know that we're all in the same boat, let's move on to some some more positives, really, to how we address SharePoint chaos. So there's there's five key elements that I think are the first natural steps to to creating a better SharePoint environment for everybody, not just not just us as, as users or us as admins. So the first one is to lock down permissions, and that can be through groups and roles and all the other various different bits and pieces you can do with permission settings. Uh, you could go, you could put everyone under, uh, everyone under complete scrutiny and lock down everything, literally lock down everything. So everything is uh, re request only rather than read only. You could make everything read only. There's, there's so many permissions in, in SharePoint if you go into the granular detail. So choosing exactly what needs to happen at which level is is often the first place to start. Thinking about how people search for documents and information within SharePoint, assigning keywords is really one of the, I think it's probably the, the, the most common thing that we, we don't do, but we should do. If you assign keywords, they appear in the metadata so that you've got a genuine search function within SharePoint, similar to Google, right? People will go to your SharePoint site type in what they they think they're looking for and and then eventually find it but only if we're there, we've got those keywords assigned as well as just having them in the title uh, the site usage tool i think is is underused so as as administrators or, or site managers seeing who's got access to what and what they're actually using opens the door to to lots of real data that we can then use to to, to see if we're doing a good enough job of managing our sharepoint site uh, embrace the me versus we rule. So when it comes to uploading documents, if the document is is for me, I'll put it in OneDrive if nobody else needs access to it. If it's for for we, so if I'm collaborating on it with other users or if anyone else is going to need access, put it in SharePoint. So that's rule of thumb. That's, that's me versus we. Uh, and the fifth and final one I think is to consider emails, which when you think about 
SharePoint, you don't necessarily think about email. You might think about some kind of integration with Outlook, but but ultimately, how much information enters your business via email and doesn't make its way to SharePoint? You'll you'll have all the information contained within the email plus the attachments coming in that that might get uploaded to SharePoint if if you've got a really savvy user who's switched on and wants to to go and upload everything. But ultimately, you've got a lot of it takes a lot of time to do that and. If you think about how we manage an email, you action it, put it in a folder, delete it, that, that's it. The natural instinct isn't to upload that information to SharePoint. You've also got the, the, the current process, which is hard enough getting users to put the right documents in OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, or the desktop. This is a nice quote from Tim Setchfield, who's the head of collaboration product at IdeaGen, who agrees, obviously, that the the email the email part of managing information in SharePoint is is often neglected. So he says, even when attachments are removed, they contain important context and unique information. So they should obviously go somewhere rather than just being hidden in a user's inbox or the other personal folders it says to use a tool that can store emails in sharepoint folders and when you do that being able to view the sender the receipt the subject and the sent date at a glance is a major win for for everybody so users obviously can find it and and admins can can take care of everything to empower that user experience i thought i'd include this graph as well um just to reinforce why we're so focused on email at the moment if you look slap bang in the middle of the graph you've got you've got last year or the year before um it's quite obviously trending up this graph this is number of users of email and this is in millions so it's only growing it's been growing 2017 to 2025 and if you follow the trajectory of that graph which doesn't really fit on this slide it, it just keeps going up right so you've got you've got tools like teams and zoom and slack for chat but a whole load of information comes in via email. We've used email for the last 30 years in business now, right? And it, it doesn't appear to be stopping anytime soon. So this this uh, this graph really just reinforces why email is the missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to SharePoint. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the current process when an email comes in. So if you have an attachment, you need to work on that. You'll the user will download that file they'll go onto their desktop they might go in the personal documents they might upload it somewhere to a onedrive or something like that but standard user behavior is to click save as it ends up on your desktop or in your documents the information stays in outlook and even if you delete it right that goes into the, the recycle bin it's not gone forever so it does stay in outlook and that's that might contain sensitive data in there once it's on somebody's desktop or in the documents people will start working on different versions and that might not get uploaded to the relevant SharePoint site and it might not be available for people that that need it, right? So obviously that leads to information being hidden, not just in the user's laptop or PC, but it's it's hidden within a specific silo. It's not shared with the rest of the business, which which leads to unproduct unproductivity uh, and also duplication across across all all documents that they that might be working on within that workflow. And ultimately, if it's a master document, it doesn't get updated. You might be sending out the wrong version of that document. That could be that could be a, a pricing issue. That could be a technical issue. And ultimately, if your master document isn't updated with the changes you've made, that could cause significant problems further down the line. However, there are ways to address this. Um, and I think Liam's going to talk us through how you can make Outlook and SharePoint work together. That's great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Um, so I'm... I'm sure uh, many of you are on the call today can agree that the, the technology landscape globally is changing at an ever increasing speed. I mean, for, for many industries, the, these technological advancements have allowed your projects to come to fruition much quish, quicker, uh, as well as cheaper and while improving from overall safety. Um, construction and healthcare are both great examples of, of industries where digital transformation has improved speed, costs, and, and safety. And something we have noticed, though, with, with people still working remotely, despite the use of tools like SharePoint being used, is that people are struggling to access their project information. You know, that the days are gone or at least limited 
where you can turn around to the desk next to you and ask your colleague to help you find an email. Um, and what this means for a lot of people is that they don't have access to the information they need and are left out of the communication loop. And, and this is a, a huge problem, which, which does set businesses up for, for massive risks. One of these risks comes in the form of project rework. I mean, you know, a recent study by Jenica found that it was 80% of project professionals spend half of their time on rework and poor communication costs $62 million every year on average. Now, poor information management can also result in employees wasting time searching for emails and documents, you know, lost business opportunities, or the development of expensive resources to find specific information. However, even when the businesses do promote good information management practices, they are often undermined by employees being unwilling to follow their business's data storage rules. Information management is slowly but, but surely becoming more standardized by companies, allowing for early detection, reduced risks of mistakes, resulting in the added benefits of less rework, reduced costs, fewer disputes, and, and improved project quality. Um, what you really need is a, is a single source of truth. And with a single source of truth, businesses can be sure that everyone in an organization has access to all the information they need before making any business decisions. It provides better way of working and encourages more transparent communication, helping organizations drive change more quickly and ensuring that all project and client members have access to one single version of the truth. As I'm sure you can imagine, this is ideal for tracking amendments or to architectural processes, for example, project scope changes and ensuring all revisions are documented, stored and, and easily accessible to everyone on a project team. Um, more importantly, a, a single source of truth approach removes the responsibility of storing and managing data away from a single person or department. The system takes responsibility for keeping documentation updated, uh, maintaining the single source of truth and flagging any potential gaps in correspondence. For a construction project, for example, this means that site managers always have live information of any incidents or amendments and data prompts them to make site adjustments as as and when they, they are needed. I mean, you ask yourself, you know, do you have the right tools in place to carry out a proper audit trail to pass the latest regulatory requirements in your industry? When good information management practices are adopted, you, you can keep your business compliant, reduce risks of mediation and future proof your project delivery, even if your entire project team have moved on to, to new roles. As I've, as I've mentioned, um, a single source of truth is essential for all organizations, but while data and information is the lifeblood of project and client work, it can quickly become the downfall. And we have access to massive amounts of information, both inside and outside of our organization. This sensitive and, and often confidential information is typically stored in documents and correspondence. And it can often be quite inaccessible, stored in you know, disparate applications uh, by various departments or, or even offices. One thing to keep in mind is that if your single source of truth is not fully complete, it's not actually the truth. And while companies typically manage their contracts well, we find that emails and email management are a key forgotten piece of the information management puzzle. Uh, email is the main form of communication globally, um, with over 333.2 billion sent and received daily. But failing to manage your email means you don't know where your business critical emails are, how they are stored, and, and you can't find the information you need when you need it. And unfortunately, without a clear email management process or, or a tool in place, employees all manage their correspondence differently. You know, some will be moving emails into other Outlook folders. Some will save important information to their individual desktops and others simply delete information if they don't see a need for it any longer. And in all of these scenarios, that information is trapped in those silos that Dominic was talking about earlier and inaccessible to, to the wider project teams. So filing, storing, managing and protecting millions of emails, documents and data files created and shared by thousands of people is, is, is definitely no easy task. And when left unmanaged, it, it can become a risky burden on your organization. And the, the key to turning scattered information into one unified source of truth while protecting your most sensitive information it is implementing robust information management processes, such as the automated email filing. So these are 
I suppose some of the common headaches that, that, that we hear on, on a day, daily basis, you know, this isn't what we agreed. You know, when did you tell us this? Uh, John's left the company, so I'm coming into this a bit cold. That's one I'm sure we've all come into. Um, you never sent us that and, and I need X, Y and Z before our meeting or simply just asking someone to kind of forward an email that, that may have been sent months or, or years ago. So the benefits of centralized information and by implementing an email management solution that helps you maintain a single source of truth, you, you can experience benefits um, such as we've got on the screen there, your, your data actually becoming discoverable, um, eliminating the human error through automated workflows, which I think is quite important, um, establish a, a version control, reduce the time wasted on searching for and recreating lost documents, similar to what we talked about with those reworks earlier, increase transparency and traceability, um, comply with regulatory and legal requirements, uh, as well as meeting ISO standards such as 9001 and 19650, which we're seeing uh, more often now. And when it comes to compliance, many businesses we speak to are focusing on two things, quality and ISO. And firms are often trying to incorporate better email, document and information management as part of how they deal with project information and client requests. Many firms are striving to, to keep up with their ISA 9001 and 19650 standards, but it can be difficult to maintain without the right tools and automation processes in place, especially now that everyone on a project team is responsible for sending and receiving information. Losing or not having access to this information can prove detrimental to the business. And appreciate ISO 19650 may not be relevant to, to everyone that's on the call today, um, but it is the latest international standard of information management on construction projects. Now, this sets out the activities required to manage information over the whole life cycle of a built asset using BIM, standard, standardizing how data is classified, data security, and how information is passed from one party to another. But technology is crucial to comply with this standard as it allows information management leaders to create access and manage all information often automatically given the the length of projects in the construction industry clear information management as described in iso 19650 will change the way projects are approached and give the ability to focus on improving designs with the certainty that the information being used is accurate and up to date and we will likely see a much faster resolution to cases like the infamous uh, Grenfell disaster should projects utilizing these information management processes go wrong. So these are a, a few of, of our customers at a mail manager that have uh, implemented that single source of truth and are currently using it as we speak. And um, in terms of what mail manager is, for, for those of you that have not come across Arup before, um, Arup is essentially the company that that created Mail Manager, and they're a multidisciplinary engineering firm headquartered in London. Um, a couple of, our, of their more well-known projects on the screen there, I guess Sydney Opera House certainly being one of them. And um, they built Mail Manager probably it was about 12, 15 years ago now internally. Uh, and the main reason was is they just didn't have any control over how their staff managed their emails. They, they did have some processes in place. They tried things like um, public folders, project email addresses, or kind of manually getting people to drag to their central locations, whether it be SharePoint or a server. But of course, all of these processes relied on individuals to remember to do it and actually decide on what is and what isn't important, which as I'm sure we can all imagine, just didn't really happen. And um, the two main issues were project teams didn't really have any up-to-date information on their projects as a whole, especially if say they were new on a project or someone had perhaps left. And another big thing was risk um, for, for the engineering industry anyway. They had to retain data for up to 14 years after a project has finished, just in case of any claims or litigation. And there, there would have been a chance they'd be able to go back and find that data, but it would be extremely time consuming to, to do so. Now, what Arup wanted to do was to find a system that would allow those project teams to find any email across a project within a few clicks. but but also take away the time spent filing and, and most importantly, the reliance on those individuals. If they had to ask people to drag and drop or you know, tag emails again, it just, it just wasn't gonna work. They, they needed something they could turn on overnight that would just start learning behaviors and would mean that they wouldn't have to discuss email management ever again. Now they, they couldn't find anything off the shelf that let them do that. So given the size of their IT team, they, they decided to write their own system. 
Now, these are, I'd say, probably some of the common problems that, that I hear personally as, a, as an account executive on day to day. You know, the, the key concerns are risk of losing that sensitive information. If we've not got something in place to make sure it's getting there, there's a high chance it's not going to. Um, another is, you know, wasted time spent filing and searching emails manually. Um, it's tough, especially using something like SharePoint, um, as Dominic mentioned at the start, if we're not using something like keywords and, and even with those, it's still very tough to get down into SharePoint and find an individual email without having to open a load to get to that point. Um, we've also got lack of control. You know, as we said throughout this, we're, we're not all working for officers anymore. We, we can't be over someone's shoulder the entire time, so we can't be sure they're doing what we need them to. And then a final one there is um, information being locked in, in people's inboxes. Now, how does Mail Manager actually solve some of these problems and, and help some of our clients? So we've got confidence in retrieval. Mail Manager has developed its own search tool so we know we can quickly and effectively find information. And that's the same as finding any email in seconds. The other difference is we are making sure people are filing throughout. We'll have a prompt that will be making sure everyone is filing as they go along rather than leaving it or, or not filing it uh, at all. This, both of these then, equal increased productivity we've, we've got time saved in filing but also time saved in searching there so so many fee earners are certainly getting some of that time back and finally we've got one place for project information and that is again leading back to that single source of truth now we, we're proud to, to integrate with, with a number of software providers um, that you can see on the screen including sharepoint but of course we're, we're discussing today and we're always looking to improve our customers email experience um, so regardless of where you want to file your emails and project correspondence integrating email into your project management certainly helps uh, alleviate risk uh, increase better communication uh, free up time for, for project work deal with staff turnover uh, help with a disconnect between site teams and the office and also helps you to be proactive rather than just reactive to, to any issues that, that may come up Brilliant. So that is um, everything from, from me and uh, from them as well. So we wanted to hand it to yourselves at the end uh, and go for a bit of a QA. and a um, As I said, if, if they haven't, no one's put anything in the chat throughout this, please do put some questions in, whether it be regarding Mail Manager or, or SharePoint itself, and, and Dominic and I will do our best to, to answer them. Just see if any of them through. That's a question that I answered just about information visibility in SharePoint. Um, I think I think there are so sorry for anyone that hasn't seen it in the Q and A box. The question is, how would you recommend people increase information visibility in SharePoint? I think there there's two things to recognise when it comes to visibility of information. People are either consuming content, so it's being shown to them. So it's it's about making sure that what is on the screen is clear that I need I need to read this and it's it's in the right place. So. This is where things like naming conventions are really important so that it's obvious that this is the file that I need to read for X, Y, Z reason. And then the second one is if I'm looking for information, I need to be able to find it, right? So the title and the naming convention, the keywords, it, it should all be optimized so that I can just type in the search box, marketing report, and I get the marketing report, right? Um, SharePoint is very good to the point where you could type in marketing and you'd get the marketing app the marketing report the marketing whatever um but to ensure that every, anyone that types in what they need gets what they want it's all about looking after the looking after the document as you upload it as you change it so that it's not just something that you know it has it's what your company recognizes as the right way to to, to name and manage documents uh, great, thanks for that, Dominic. And I can see there's yeah, there's a few questions have, have come in um, now. So I'm just going to start from from the top uh, from Christian, who says, "What do you suggest to make Mail Manager and SharePoint connect more efficiently?" Um, so if we're talking about connection, how information is getting to to SharePoint, I mean, just using Mail Manager itself is going to be extremely efficient. Um, when you go to file an email, it will bring up a prompt. It will, it will bring up all of the locations that you would have put in to various projects or however you have that laid out. And then we'll be putting a direct link. So the email will be going into specific email folders per project. I think in terms of efficiency and making it connect better, I always say simplicity is better when when setting up mail manager. We don't want to have loads of different subfolders 
or emails within um, the system itself. We want to make it as easy for users as possible by just having that one email folder. And then you've still got the confidence that you can use the, the mail manager search to retrieve that information without the need to have those subfolders and, and really take time away from, from your colleagues and employees um, to file them. Brilliant. So another one we've got is, would you recommend that all emails are filed in SharePoint? Um, so there's a question below this. I think I'll answer both at the same time. It's, it's around, you know, if emails are in SharePoint, does this mean that everyone can see the emails that I send? And would this create privacy issues? And uh, what we don't want is people to be filing absolutely everything, whether I'm sure there's some people on this call that use their work email for personal ones as well. And with Mail Manager anyway, everyone gets given their own personal filing folder. So say something does come in, you would like to save it, but it doesn't need to go into um, the, the project folders per se. You can put it into there where no one else can see it but yourself. Now, if we're talking about business emails as well, there is going to be times where perhaps an email comes into a director and it's discussing fees, for example. We don't want everybody in the company to see that. And the way that Mail Manager handles this is by actually replicating the same permissions that you have in SharePoint. So there'll be areas of, of SharePoint that not everybody has access to. And when a Mail Manager folder or a Mail Manager link is created there, that will simply be replicated. And only those people that have access to that area in SharePoint will also have access to both file and search in, in Mail Manager as well. I can think I see another one from... Christian here, another question is what kind of workflow templates the mail manager provide for SharePoint? So uh, on our website, we do have um, some information, I guess an FAQ regarding um, SharePoint and how we would recommend setting it up to, to make the most out of using mail manager. Um, Christian, if you were to email sales at mail manager after this, I'd be more than happy to send that across. So you've got that and that just goes over some examples of I'd say how a lot of our clients set it up um, so we're not overcomplicating things. Um, so I can see one here that says, can we not just use SharePoint as a complete project management tool? Um, so yeah, definitely might be tempting, um, but SharePoint alone isn't the complete solution for, for project management. You know, while your entire organization is, is very likely to have all documents in SharePoint, staff will still spend the majority of their time in their email inbox. So instead of having your project information in two places, SharePoint would integrate with Mail Manager, um, which I'd be happy to, to show you in more kind of one-on-one -on -one demonstration of how that works. And that's an Outlook add-in. And what that means is that you will have kind of a two-way file and search integration, which really increases the visibility of that project um, information. Hopefully that helps to answer the one below as well, how SharePoint and Outlook um, linked using Mail Manager. I'm not sure if there's any on there that are more uh, around SharePoint for yourself. Just checking through them as we go. Uh, I answered one which um, there's a good blog post someone to check out using using SharePoint like File Explorer or using a tool like that. Um, there's the the answer is yes. If I think at the moment, if I'm understanding the the question correctly, you you can do that. You just need to set it up correctly. So I've just uh, added a link to a blog post on on how that works. Um, just on the project management one, if you're not already. SharePoint has a Gantt view, which uh, might be very helpful for uh, project management purposes. I know that some people prefer to see their tasks in, in Gantt view uh, as a typical project manager would. That's great. Um, I can see one here as well from Andy that uh, says, you know, we're just starting off looking to move from OneDrive to SharePoint. How should we set SharePoint up to accept emails into SharePoint? I'm sure if you want to take that one. To accept emails into SharePoint, Does, do you mean using Mail Manager? Yeah, that's why I wasn't sure. I mean, if using Mail Manager, setting up is the same as if you're using OneDrive. We'd just be having folders per project with an emails folder within that, and that's what we're going to be linking to. Um, if you weren't using Mail Manager, how would you? Is there a specific way, Dom, that you can set up SharePoint so it can accept emails? Um, so the the long way and the way that fails most of the time is asking people to do it manually. Um, if you're a technical person with the ability to do so, you could build some kind of automated workflow, um, maybe create an app in SharePoint that does that for you, but you'd need to push and pull the data. 
uh, which is what mail manager does, right? So I, I don't think there's any benefit of spending the time trying to get it right when a solution already exists. Certainly, certainly. And um, so another one, um, this one's about mail manager. What parts of an email does mail manager search, um, e.g. title, body, or attachment? So what mail manager will do is when you're using the search tool, it's going to look in the subject and the body. Um, now it can tell you if an email has an attachment or not. So we do have a search feature that when toggled, it will just show you emails that include attachments, um, but it doesn't have the ability to actually go into the attachment itself and, and search um, information there. Underneath, um, surely a tool like Mail Manager means that we will have a lot of duplicate emails going into our SharePoint. That, that's a very good question. So um, what happens with mail manager is every time an email is sent it has metadata involved in it and mail manager will take that metadata and create a unique timestamp which is right down to the second and, and that is what's going to deduplicate emails so if you had five people getting cc'd in the same email and then filing it to the same project it would recognize that all five of those have the the same timestamp it would delete four and just leave you with one and, and actually that that feature we find saves people roughly um, about a third in in storage. There's a question here about uh, letting people outside of your organization know that new files have been deposited on SharePoint. Besides telling people to turn on their notifications or favorite this folder, is an email with a link to the folder still the best way? I think the, the best way is to get a notification on the specific tool or to make going and checking your notifications if you don't want alerts um making it a, a standard practice to go in and check on a regular basis that where you need to where you work all day be it sharepoint or, or teams if it's on top of sharepoint you you're in there not specifically checking folders but checking if you've got notifications for those folders so that you're always aware of it failing that turn your notifications on failing that um an email with a link to the the updated folder i guess is okay but notifications and living in these apps is it should really negate the need to send emails to say that something else within another app has been updated however acknowledging that not everybody works that way and everybody does spend a lot of time in their email inboxes um, you could go down that route. I think it's more a matter of understanding how that person outside of your organization works. If they're going to sit in your SharePoint or Teams environment all day, then keep it in there. If you recognize that actually they've got other clients and their inbox is where that you're going to get their attention, that might be the the best the best cause of action. But I, I think it's a it's personal preference, really. I would I would work out whether the external contractor or the external agency, whatever it might be, work out what works best mutually for both of you. Great. Um, I've got one from Vincent here. It says, are there any significant legal cases, particularly in the construction industry, that have arisen due to email SharePoint chaos? Um, so yeah, there have been, I guess, a number of like multi-million pound um, fines, I think, recently microsoft was ordered to pay 25 million dollars um in a, in a court settlement when they couldn't produce specific email evidence on the case um i think probably the, the biggest one in the construction industry though is going to be the, the one we mentioned earlier which was the the grenfell inquiry that revealed emails indicating they had awareness of dangers associated to, to the building cladding and then of course all of those people sadly sadly died from that um take a few more questions here we've still got another five minutes um so carl weaver says if you have public folders already set up for some projects but not all in outlook um can these be transferred across so that everything is contained within sharepoint as mail manager following implementation rather than having a hybrid mail manager and public folders in in outlook um that's, that's a great question so mail manager does have a bulk filing tool um, that as long as those public folders are on 365 online, um, then we would have the ability to take information from those public folders and put them into the, the newly created SharePoint locations. Um, so you wouldn't be, I guess, starting from day one, you'd be able to retrospectively file those emails and it would be as if they were always there and you'd be able to search them um, from here. 
and then we've got you see one of us here from from christine we use document sets in sharepoint for storing emails and documents unfortunately we've not yet found a way to store emails and the attachments directly into the respective document set through mail manager and if you have a high number of document sets direct links in mail manager are not helpful is there any mail manager solution than the direct links um i've not come across that before christian um so with the document sets um traditionally we, we can of course create we should be able to create email folders within that but i think that may be slightly more technical for me to answer without actually seeing what those document document sets look like um and and how we'd be able to link from there so maybe worth I, uh, emailing the, the sales at mailmanager.com email address um, so we can set up a call and, and understand exactly how those document sets look. Great, so we've still got a few more minutes left. So if there is any any further questions, um, please please do pop them in. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you everyone for, for, for joining today. Um, and thank you, Dominic, as well, um, for coming on and explaining, um, as you said, this this SharePoint chaos is very interesting from our side. We, we often hear it, of course, from when people come to us with these issues, um, when often it's a little bit too late. Um, so as I said, any any further questions, please send it to the sales at mailmanager.com email address and we'll be able to answer them. Um, and, and of course, I believe Dom um, will have his email there as well. Um, just in case there's any questions for him um but thank you all hope you enjoy the rest of your mornings or afternoons depending on where you are and uh, we'll see you at the next webinar <laughs>